welcome back parents to the place to be when you want the very best from your little one's sleep, whatever that may be. So today I'm going to be talking all about dropping the nap when nap times are no more. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I know people have mixed opinions on that. Well, stick around because I will go through when is the best time for this to happen, how you can make it easier on your little one and avoid having it unravel and just destroy nighttime sleep. So I'll be right back with all the answers. Okay, let's delve in. So when are little ones ready to drop the daytime nap. <laughs> well, actually, I would always recommend keeping it an, as long as you can, um, but certainly up to age three. Around age three, they may show signs of wanting to drop the nap, and some are ready. Some may show signs and not be ready, and others aren't ready until they're four or even over the age of four. So it's quite a broad spectrum of time as to when they're truly ready. But don't worry, because I've got some answers for how you can make this a gradual thing, which sounds weird because you'd think it either has to be a nap is there in the day or it isn't. But actually there are some little tricks you can use to make it easier. Whilst this one may need a nap or not need a nap. There's also the parent perspective on this because for some parents they're like, oh no, please keep napping because that's my little bit of time to do some things and have some headspace. Whereas other parents are like, phew, I don't need to fight this battle every single day anymore. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> so there are mixed feelings and I would love to know which side of the fence you sit on the nap going completely. Is it something you are excited about or like dreading? If you're lucky, in some cases, and especially if you have a little one who does already nap well, if they, you know, they've got their nice nap rhythm in place, they're doing their nice one nap a day, um, you're most likely to be lucky and to see the nap very naturally get shorter. Um, it just, just does. They're just done sooner. And you know that, this is lovely, because it's like the organic approach. Um, you know that they're okay because they've been napping for two hours a day, it's gone down to an hour and a half a day, maybe an hour and a quarter, and they're waking up just as happy and rested as they were. They're not waking up prematurely from a nap and crying and upset and um, cranky because when they wake up like that, that's usually a sign they're not done, they're not finished. Perhaps something disturbed them or they just woke too soon, but that's a sign that they haven't actually finished sleeping. But if they're waking up quite happily, in the same way they were when they were having two hours and an hour and a half, you just start to see it naturally get shorter. And if you get that, then you're very lucky. It's a lovely way to just see it slowly, slowly disintegrate, and you know your little one doesn't need it anymore. When that happens, they usually also carry the stamina to go for the rest of the afternoon and through to their bedtime um, quite comfortably because they are comfortably ready and they're showing that organically. Some little ones, it's less obvious and things are a little messier. Um, maybe they've never been a great napper, maybe they've never really taken enough sleep, so it's harder to tell because you can't really see that the nap's reducing because it was possibly too short anyway and you've maybe been doing backup naps and early bedtimes to compensate for as long as you can remember. <laughs> and so it might not be quite so obvious. That's when you want to use a little bit of that guide of age, um, but also, and it's a, but it's a big broad age spectrum, isn't it? So how do you know? Um, but a little bit of knowing, look, no, they're not three yet, it's not that. If they're over three, mm, it could be that. How, what else can we look for? And look at how bedtime and nighttime sleep is going. If your little one is settling quite smoothly to sleep at bedtime and sleeping soundly all night long, obviously they do wake, but resettling quite easily um, with or without your help. If they're sleeping well at night on the whole, then it's, it's a good chance that they may be ready if you're seeing signs like suddenly we, we, we're finding it more difficult to settle at bedtime or we're finding it more difficult to take that nap. That could be, um, it's time that it, it is time for the nap to go or begin to go. Um, if nighttime sleep, however, isn't great, 
if you've got a lot of difficulty getting them off to sleep, if you have really disturbed nights and wake-ups and difficulty resettling and perhaps even early rising, then the nap is not ready to go. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I see is, oh, nights are a wreck. Like, we're going to have to get rid of that daytime sleep just to make sure they're tired enough. It's like emptying out the tank just so that they can have that great big sleep at nighttime. That's not the answer. And whilst once in a blue moon, that will work. Once in a blue moon, they will crash out and zonk out for 12 hours and you'll think you've cracked it. But that's not sustainable and that's not going to be the norm. That's going to be the rarity. The norm is going to be these cranky, restless, unsettled nights because they're overtired. And so um, it's important to keep that daytime sleep in there if we've got problems with night sleep and we're overtired. If a little one's overtired, keep that sleep. So what happens when they get to an age where they can't really nap anymore, but you also know they're not quite ready to drop it? completely. That's where quiet time comes in. And so the nap ideally will get shorter and shorter and shorter until we don't really nap, but we still have quiet time. And if you present your preschooler with quiet time anyway, and actually quite often they do this in preschools, they have the opportunity, if they want, to curl up and nod off, but they don't have to. And I love things like having a quiet time bag, like a little drawstring bag with maybe a book, um, not toys, but like um, a book, there may be um, a sensory, there could be something sensory in there, like sensory books, touchy-feely things, a blanket perhaps, like a little comfort thing. Um, you could have a nap mat, you know, the ones that have the little pillow and the mat, the covered thing, and set up this quiet time space or a bean bag, like something like that. And if you have this quiet time environment where you dim the lights or you pull the blinds, it's just you make it a little darker, take away some of that daytime stimulation, kill the noise, like no screens, TVs, sounds like distractions, just make it nice and calm and zen-like and create this space for them to have that chill time. And actually it doesn't matter if they fall asleep or not in quiet time. If they do, don't wake them, it's cool. That's just telling you that they do still need a little bit of sleep and they probably won't sleep for too long anyway. If they don't, that's okay. It's telling us that they may be, they may still need it and not take it, but they may not need it. And, but they're still having that quiet time. And that quiet time is still clocking up our little Z points. It's still giving them a, a level of rest because it's reducing all the stimulation and giving them some calm. And that quiet time counts. It absolutely counts. So if you're struggling to get your preschooler to nap when you know they do still need to, but they are having some quiet time, then you're still winning. It's, it's better than not bothering. It's better than just going, oh my God, this is too hard, I quit. And then letting your little one be starved of that sleep or rest or quiet time that they do so desperately need. So use that as part of the process. If you do go without the daytime nap, but you find your little one is tired in the afternoon, a backup nap is fine. There's no harm in going, ah, oh, okay, maybe today we do need a little bit of sleep and just slot a little bit of sleep in there. You can always limit the nap if you need a backup nap and you think, okay, they're asleep now, it's three o'clock, 3.30, but, and I see this all the time with mums on the school run and it's like, oh no, they've gone to sleep now. Just let them have a little power nap, but don't let it go on too long, 20, 30 minutes and just go, right, okay, I'm gonna wake them up now just so that we don't completely skew the bedtime routine. The, a sign that they're not entirely ready to stop sleeping in the day is when you get the sort of the car ride at 4 or 5 p.m. and they go to sleep in the car and you're like, yeah, see, there's still some tiredness in there, can't quite resist that. Um, and you know that they're not quite ready to go without sleep in the day, but probably are past the ability to settle in their cot or crib um, and take a nap as such. So it's a good sign that they still probably need a little bit of sleep or at least quiet time and um, perhaps an early night. Now, early nights, early to bed is a brilliant piece to use throughout this time and this transition. And most little ones will need an early night for probably some weeks, if not a few months, um, just to help just to help them manage that whole day of not napping and bringing that bedtime that little bit earlier. It won't stay there, it's just temporary until they've built that stamina properly, properly up. Um, okay, so I hope you have found this helpful in what to look for and how to navigate this little bumpy road down the, the, the lane of um, getting rid of that nap completely. 
Um, I hope it goes smoothly for you. And if you have any questions, please do reach out. We're always here to help. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.